This video, we're going to talk about the biggest changes between the books and Season 5, Episode 1, The Wars to Come. This is just supposed to be a fun look at the differences that stood out to me, and obviously isn't all the differences because there is way too many, and not at all condemning the amazing HBO show Game of Thrones. So jumping right in, number 10, Lance Lannister. At first, I didn't even recognize this kid, and I'm glad D&D did the typical show movie thing of reminding us, oh, Cousin Lancel. Man, Lancel got buff. The Sparrows must have a great gym plan with membership. So in the books, we know Lancel got seriously injured in battle. He recovers, but he's never quite the same. He is no longer handsome, and he looks much older with white hair. Definitely not the hunky guy we saw in the show. Lancel then gets a little... a lot religious crazy with the Faith of the Seven and eventually joins the Warrior Sons. I'm interested to see if we're still going that route somehow. Maybe we're skipping the whole wife bit and just having him be a sparrow and then having him move right into joining the Warrior Son. Number 9, White Rat. White Rat in the books is Stalwart Shield. I have no idea why they changed the name. Maybe to make it easier for the show watchers, White Rat is much easier to remember. But he's dead, so I guess you don't have to remember him. But does the name change mean we aren't getting the stalwart shields to patrol? I don't know. The death was also a bit different. White Rat was attacked by multiple people, about 6+, plus, and had cuts all over his body. HBO probably just simplified the death to cut down on actors and effects. In the end, they give him a crimson smile by slitting his cheeks, and they shove goat genitalia down his throat. Not really too disappointed we didn't get to see that. I really wish Daenerys would have asked about White Rat being in the brothel, because I really wanted to hear Grey Worm's response. Hell, I thought they were setting it up with Milsande asking Grey Worm about it. I love his line, Even those who lack a man's parts may still have a man's heart. Also, I really enjoyed the harpy mask. I think they did an exquisite job with it. Number 8, Mance being shot by Jon Snow. In the books, Jon arranged for others to shoot Mance. And I say Mance in quotations, of course. To give him a quicker death. Ulmer, Hill, Greyfeather, and Bearded Ben shoot Mance, hitting him in the chest, gut, and throat. Not just in the chest by Jon Snow like we see in the show. And we'll actually talk about Mance a little bit more in a bit. Number 7. I think this is only minor, but Tyrion was in a crate instead of a barrel like in the books. Also, Varys being with him is different than the books, and I'm really wondering how he's going to get back to King's Landing to kill certain individuals. I guess if Varys heads to Marine with Tyrion, Varys still has some time to get back to King's Landing, maybe? Number 6, which is also tied into number 7, we didn't get to see the journey across the Narrow Sea when Tyrion meets young Griff. I think this is a huge way of saying Aegon doesn't matter for the rest of the books. I was waiting for Varys to say something about Illyrio, oh, hey, he's with someone else right now, wink, wink, nudge, nudge, but nope. So maybe we don't have Aegon this season, which is pretty much confirmed, but if we have him next season, maybe they just skipped over this whole part of his story and we start off right with him in Westeros. Who knows? I was kind of looking forward to Tyrion poking at young Griff too in that lovely Tyrion sort of way that he does. Number five, Dario is very different. The guy's whole personality is really changed from the books. In the books, he's this temperamental, fickle, bloodthirsty man. Now he's like some sage. I think this just might be because they're rolling a few uncasted characters into him, but I still want my blue hair, damn it. Number four, in the books, we know Mance didn't die. Melisandre uses magic and a glamour to make Rattleshirt appear as Mance, so Rattleshirt dies while screaming he isn't the king. This was kind of a bummer, to be honest. I'm about 99% sure it was Mance that died. His dialogue to Stannis before being tied up was something Mance would say, not the fearful Rattleshirt. I think the look between Mance and his men was more of a you're the leader now and goodbye sort of thing. How this affects the rescue of fake Arya, I'm not sure. Tormund could always fill in for Mance. Number three, the Tywin's funeral. I was really hoping for the whole Tywin stinking up the place and making people nauseous. I also wanted to see them finding Shay and Cersei's handling of it. Tywin's curling lip into a smile as his body rotted was probably a bit much for HBO. Well, okay, maybe not. But seeing how badly it freaked out the siblings, I think would have been a great addition. They wrapped up his funeral pretty fast, which I guess is a good thing for a 10 episode season, since we really can't focus on one thing for too long. I rank this high on changes just because I love the theories behind Tywin's stench, such as did Oberon poison him? Number two, Maggie the Frog. Maggie the Frog was hella sexy in this show. She had this whole Pirates of the Caribbean vibe to her. 
In the books, Maggie is described as an old woman with crusty yellow eyes, short, squat, with warts, and all her teeth are gone. Definitely not the description. HBO always needs to sex it up for viewers, which isn't necessarily a bad thing. The one answer to Cersei's questions was a tad different than in the book. She asks, will the king and I have children? In the show, Cersei is told she will have three kids and Robert 20. In the books, Cersei is told she'll have three and Robert 16. The change from Robert's kids from 16 to 20 probably doesn't really matter and was just a random change they decided to throw in there, especially since the show cut most of Robert's bastards anyways. Maggie did talk about the gold crowns and shrouds, but didn't finish with the little brother wrapping his hands around her throat to choke the life out of her, so maybe they'll cut back to Maggie the Frog scenes in another episode and complete the prophecy, or maybe to HBO this kind of setup doesn't matter. The show watchers already know Cersei hates Tyrion, so why do they need further reason? I would have loved to see young Cersei kill her friend, though. Number one, Loras is a complete tool in the show. Book Loras is a caring, smart man. He cares for the Reach, cares for Tom, and cares for Jaime. He thought Renly was his freaking soulmate. He cares about vows. He cares about knighthood. He knew Renly was the one for him, and when Renly died, he knew he'd never find another because when the sun has set, no candle can replace it. Loras joins the Kingsguard willingly to protect his sister Marjorie, but also so that he can avoid marriage and continue mourning Renly. Show Loras seemed to absorb the place of a few characters they didn't cast, but he also acts like a spoiled rich brat that just wants to go around having sex and not caring. I really think they're handling Loras very poorly in the show, and that these changes to him really cheapen his character and the man that he is. So those were my top 10 changes from Season 5, Episode 1, The Wars to Come. You can write your thoughts below. Otherwise, make sure you come back every Sunday for Game of Thrones History or every Wednesday for a random Game of Thrones video.